what we're going to do today is jump into creating a kind of mini golf style game. And what I'm going to use is the 3D core project. And I'm going to call this mini golf. And hit create project, and it's going to take Unity a minute there and Unity Hub to create the project and get everything set up. Um, to explain the way this is going to work, we're going to start off and we're going to create a the first thing we're going to do is create like something to play on and probably we'll start out with just like a empty plane so that we've plenty of space to play around and mess with things um, and not be too worried about falling off the course or things like that. Then we're going to have a ball that we'll give some physics to. We're going to have a target so we'll maybe make a little flag that when we hit it we can kind of move forward to the next level and things like that. And then the last thing we'll do is kind of get the code for making the ball work. Now, one thing I want you to know about the code this week is probably it's it's about as challenging as we're going to get for code in this module. If you don't understand everything, that's fine. The project will be uploaded to Brightspace and you're free to like look at the code there, use some of it if you think it's useful for you or like just download that project and build your own your own mini golf course is based off that. The courses you're going to create, you're going to make them I'm going to show you like how to make the one using like basic Unity primitives, but your your kind of assignment for this week, what you're going to do over next week, is create some courses using Pro Builder. So you're going to design some custom courses and kind of have them play out whatever way you want. I'd encourage you to consider stuff like, you know, things like using Cine Machine to follow the ball for the camera if you wanted to do things like that. Um, any of the stuff we've shown so far, if you want to like trigger audio or anything like that, like it's maybe, there may be interesting ideas to explore and try out as well. Okay. So this is nearly ready, so we'll jump into the unit. So this is the Unity project. Again, from layout, I'm going to go back to the MSC layout, the one I showed you the first week. Um, and so I'm going to just close up this package because it looks a little busy and expand out this. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is create a new scene. And I'm going to go with basic built in because we got the lights and the camera. I'm going to hit create. And when that's created, I'm going to then hit save. And I'm going to save that in the scenes folder. And I'm going to call that uh, golf one. And then I'm also going to hit save as. And I'm going to call this golf two. Actually, you know what? I won't do that yet. I'll wait till we've everything kind of set up here and then we'll duplicate this level to be golf two. Okay. So at the minute, we've got the scene golf one open. Um, we've got our main camera here that's looking at the world, and we've got a direction like this UMG is going to give us. So, the first thing I'm going to do is create a 3D object, and I'm going to create a cube. And I'm going to set the thickness of this to 0.5, and I'm going to set the X to 20 and the Z to 20. Okay, and this is kind of what we're going to play golf on. So, I'm going to just call this ground. And then the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new folder down here in the project. I'm going to call it materials. I'm going to right click on that and I'm going to hit create and there is material here. Okay, I'm just going to call this ground. And I'm going to duplicate that. And I'm going to call one ball. So the ground. The only thing we're going to change about this is I'm going to change the this albedo, which is just like the color of the um, of the thing. Uh, so I'm going to set that to be like kind of a. Actually, I'm going to put this. I'm going to drag this onto the ground. Actually, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that color. Kind of a greenish color is what I'm looking for there. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make this game so that it is a. Uh, Go close this. I'm going to make this game so that it is an isometric game. Okay, and just to show you what isometric games look like, we're going for like this sort of um, this sort of perspective. 
So it's like everything's kind of at like kind of perfect, pretty much right angles. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to want to rotate the camera on a couple of axes. So the first thing I'm going to do is go, let's try 45 there and 45 there. And where are we at here? Forty-five there might be too much. Maybe thirty zero and this one forty-five. Thirty thirty, this will work well. Yeah. maybe what we want kind of something along those lines the exact angles like try and pick angles you think are going to look nice now one thing if you can see here this camera is rendering things as perspective so if you can see my cursor here what it shows is this edge of the course and this edge of the course if you follow them off towards infinity eventually this side is going to meet at a point with this side okay for isometric games if you look here um this side of this building and this side, they're perfectly parallel to one another. They're never going to meet. So to fix that on the main camera, I am going to change it from perspective. So projection, and I'm going to set that orthographic. And let's move our camera out a little. So I'm going with 30 and 45. I think my first guess was right. OK, and I'm just going to make, we won't necessarily do this, but if you see the size here, I'm zoom out. And the way we know this kind of looks right is this is like a perfect diamond. So this side and this side are parallel, and this side and this side are parallel. So they no longer will meet each other at the point. I could also hit this button on the inspector, and it's going to turn the inspector view isometric. So again, it's going to kind of closer represent what we're seeing in the game. So I'm going to change the size of this down quite a bit. And I'm going to move the camera like somewhere that it's looking pretty much towards the center of the level. Something like that I think is probably OK. Um, the other thing I'm going to do is just change the camera's background color to a nicer shade of blue. and change that from skybox to solid color okay. and that just means that if we get to the edge of the level we get kind of a nice color kind of like crossy road or something like that. Cool. so that's that the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to create a 3d object and i'm going to create a sphere i'm going to put the ball material on the sphere And I'm going to set the sphere's position to zero, zero, zero. Okay, perfect. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with this. The, now that I've got this here, I can maybe see if I want to tweak the main camera position a little. Um, and I can switch this to local if I want to see, like. Something like that, maybe is good. So the sphere is going to be our ball. So X position, I'm going to leave at. Uh, well, yeah, OK. I think we can leave that at zero. So that's uh, red here. We want it kind of in the center of this. Um, y position, we're going to change in a minute. And Z, if we set this to, let's say, minus. Sorry, that's the rotation I'm changing. That's the position I need to change. And I can probably even go minus four on that. The scale of this ball, I'm going to make sure I've got this uh, constrained proportions enabled. And I'm going to set the scale to maybe 0.25. And on the Y, I'm going to set this to 0.25. Right. I'm going to set this to 0.5. 
So this means this golf ball in the simulation is going to be um, 0.5 of a meter, basically. Started there, it's starting just about on the ground. Go. And we can see our little ball sitting there. Got to make this green just a bit uh, deeper so that we've got a bit more contrast with the ball. So we've our ball sitting there. We're going to rename that sphere to ball. The other thing I'm going to do is add a rigid body component to this. And that means it will basically fall. So now if I move this up in the air and press play. Now, one thing is that ball feels like it's falling really slowly. So one thing we're going to do here is we're going to change the physics of our world. And to do that, we go edit. Project settings. And we can click on where is its physics. And instead of minus this, I'm going to go like minus 30. So our, our gravity is going to be three times stronger than the gravity we actually experience in the real world. And our ball should, yeah, that feels much nicer. The one thing we're not getting at the minute, we're not getting a bounce or much of a bounce. So I'm going to select materials, right click, and I'm going to add a thing called a physic material. Um, and what this does is, well, I'm going to drag this onto the ball. What this does is let us customize kind of some of these different variables. So I'm going to set bounciness here to one, and you'll see it'll be quite a bouncy ball. So they'll have a lot of, like, it'll bounce up and down a good bit. Yeah, and actually, bounciness of one looks pretty good there. I think I'm pretty happy with that. Lower bounciness means it's just not going to bounce much at all either. Um, the other thing I'm going to do is at the minute, drag here is zero. And what this means is our object won't really slow down that much when it's moving and we want to, I'm just going to set this to one. We'll end up tweaking this as we play the game and get things set up. But we're going to start off with that. So we now have our game's going to start. Ball's going to drop from the sky. So let's get our UI in for that. Uh, I had a question, John. Um, um, let's so... go with a, let's go with an image first. I'm going to set the color to that to just like a, I'm actually going to set it completely black and then just change its um, its alpha value so it's a little bit transparent. And, and if I press F on the keyboard here, I'm going to click this 2D button, go into 2D mode. I'm just going to make this so that it overlaps this a bit. And actually, one thing I'm going to do at this stage, because I always forget to do this at the start, is select canvas. Instead of constant pixel size, I'm going to set scale with screen size. On the start screen, we have the issue of it having changed its scale a little bit. So we're just going to make sure it overlaps that by a bit. Now, with the canvas selected, I'm going to right click UI, and I go, oh, that's not what I wanted. I didn't want to scroll over. With the start screen selected, right click UI, and I'm going to hit button text mesh pro. Import TMP essentials. That'll take a second, it's pretty quick. Okay. And this button, I'm just going to put some text on it. I'm just going to change the its text, and I'm going to just sort of play. And I got to move this button to this bottom right hand corner. We could scale this up a bit if we want. And the next thing I'm going to do is just create a bit of text. Again, underneath start screen, UI, text, text Rush Pro. And Welcome to Mini Golf. Uh, 
I'm going to copy the name of this so that's in here. I'm going to move this to this top right hand corner. Yeah, we'll see how that works. I might, might end up moving these UI elements about around a bit. Now, this play button on click, I'm going to create a, it's something that happens on that Unity event. And we're going to go for the ball. And we're going to select the rigid body. And we're going to say bool use gravity. And we're going to set that to true. And what that means when we click this, we're going to set gravity on the ball to true. And the other thing we're going to do when we click that button is we're going to disable the start screen. So we are going to go game object and set active bool to false. And one thing I need to do is just jump here into the ball and on the rigid body, turn off use gravity. And that means when the game starts, the ball isn't going to use gravity. So now we're going to be able to press play. Click play on our game, ball falls down, our game's going to start. And obviously we've no, we've no interaction here yet. And the tricky part is getting all this interaction working on the ball moving is a little bit tricky, but we'll get to it, it won't be too bad. So that's that set up. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just disable the start screen and I'm going to enable use gravity on this. And I'm just going to test out. We're going to create a collider um, that's going to basically let us control the levels and stuff like that. So I am going to go to 3D object and I'm going to create a, a cylinder. And I'm going to call this flagpole. I'm going to reset the transforms on this so that it goes to zero, zero, zero in the world. I'm going to make sure I'm using constrained scale or I'm going to make it like pretty skinny. So 0.15 or something like that. And then I'm going to turn off this constrained scale. I'm going to make it bigger in the Y. OK, and then next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a 3D object. I'm going to create a queue. And I'm going to call this flag. Flaff. And I'm going to reset the position of this. And so the Y value, I'm going to just move up slightly, something like that. The X value. I'm now going to manipulate the uh, scales kind of separately in each direction so that this becomes a flag. I'm going to turn off TV mode here. their flag we can pretty happy with that one thing we can do as well if we want is uh, we can create 3d objects and we can create text and we're just going to put I'm just going to put like number one on this and so that text And then we're going to have to do, it's not ideal that the rotation in this is a bit off from our flag, but we can see if we can rotate around the Y axis. I think, yeah, we'll be like minus 90. No, we're going to get 90 on the Y. Go. So, we just here need to change this so that it is on our flagpole. Basically, might it might stop rendering or it might keep rendering. But we're gonna do this so that where that text, <coughs> sorry, where that three D text is rendering is just on the flag, and the font size are gonna start decreasing. 
And I'm going to create a new material here. And I'm going to call this flag. I don't want to keep that in flash. But I'm going to put that on the flag itself. And I'm going to set this color to, I think normally these are like red flags, basically. And it's starting to look pretty good. So I'm going to make the flag a child of the flagpole. And then I am. Um, Yeah, see, you know, that might be fine. So what we're going to do in this game is as, as long as you like hit off this flagpole, you're going to, it's going to count as, um, as having, moving to the next level, basically. So flagpole here on the Z, I'm just going to check where the ball is minus four. I should be able to set the flagpole on the Z to four. Cool. So we've our little flag there, our ball there. So we're going to want to set up a bit of code. Like one thing we could do here if we wanted is rotate this flagpole. You can see how well this will work. If we want it to be something like that so that the players can see it a bit easier, but I don't think it's much better doing that. Um, yeah, I probably should have had the flag go the other way, but it's fine. We're kind of able to see the way the game is going to work. So we've got fly, we've got flags, we've got the balls, we've got like the start of a golf game. We don't quite have a golf game yet. So what I'm going to do is create a, um, I'm going to create a new script here. I'm going to call this collision trigger. Or maybe I'll just call this collision event. So we're not confusing triggers and colliders. So I'm going to double-click this collision event. It is hopefully going to open up JetBrains. It's going to take a second for that to open up. We can hit trust and open. And this will just take Unity a second. You can see down here it's connecting and loading different modules and stuff like that. Yeah. So that's while we're waiting for it, I'm just going to delete out this chunk of code. Um, at the top of this, because we're going to use Unity events, I'm going to type in using. Unity engine dot events. Okay, and this is going to let us access to Unity events. And then I'm going to create a public Unity event. And I'm going to call this um, put or something like that. Yeah, put is fine. Okay. And so we're going to say, I'm going to create a new on um, collision enter, which is as soon as the ball collides with this object, we're just going to do put dot. Right, pretty simple script. Again, we've used Unity events a bit, and it means basically once the ball hits off the flagpole, we're going to invoke the put event. So to test this out in the editor, we're going to press play. I'm just, while this is running, I'm going to just say, let's say, just drag the ground in there and say game object uh, set active to false. So the ground should disappear if we hit off this flagpole. To test that, I'm just going to drag the ball there. Cool. As soon as the ball hits off that, we lose the ground and disappear. So that's just testing that our Unity event is working. So we have that working. The, I'm just going to make sure that event isn't there. Yeah, cool. 
Next thing I do is create an empty game object. Uh, I'm going to call this game manager. And I'm going to add a component called level manager. This is very similar to what we're doing last week with the start and end screens and stuff like that. So this level manager script, I'm going to go into Jeff Rains open up level manager and I'm going to create two functions inside here. Um, so first I'm going to do using Unity engine scene management. Okay, and this lets us load in and add scenes. And I'm going to create two empty uh, functions here. And so one is going to be public void load next scene. And the other one is going to be public. Void reload game. We have two options. We're going to check to see if we've basically if we've reached um, the end of the scene or not. Or sorry, we're going to check if there's other scenes. So because you're going to be making three levels, we want to move on to the next level if we can. Um, yeah, and that should basically work. Cool. And then if if we get to the end of that, we're going to check to see basically if we're at the last scene. And if we are, we're going to give the we're going to show an end screen and let the player see what's going on. And we're going to use Unity events, Unity engine events, and we're going to create a public Unity event. And we're going to call this maybe end of So what we're going to do here is we're going to say if uh, scene. So what we're going to do is access the scene manager, which keeps track of all the different scenes we have. Dot get active scene. Dot Oh, that's sorry. I hit set active scene there. Get active scene dot. Looking for the build index here. But we're going to do a plus one here because we want to see because arrays are zero indexed. If that makes sense, we want to see if the current scene plus one is equal or is less than the scene count. Okay, I'll just show you that there it is less than. Scene manager dot scene cat. We're going to have an else statement and we're going to do end game dot invoke. Cool. So, what this is doing here, it's saying if the current scene index in our build plus one is less than the scene count. Basically, we're going to do the code here, which means it'll load the next scene. Otherwise, we're going to say it's the end of the game. So let's say if we've got three, two, let's go really simple. We've got one scene in our level. So we're going to have our build index is going to be zero plus one is one and our scene count is one. So that's not less than one. So we're actually going to go to the else statement. If we've two scenes and we're on scene zero, it's going to go to the next scene because zero plus one is one. One, which is less than our scene count of two. I hope that makes sense. I think I think you should be pretty comfortable with if statements and zero index arrays and stuff like that. But they can be a little tricky. They're not something I'm like I'm comfortable with them, but I always end up fussing with them a little bit. But basically, if we're in this situation, we're gonna go uh, scene manager dot Set active scene, and we're going to set this to uh, manager load scene. And what we're going to do is we're going to get the current scene manager dot get active scene, 
and we're going to plus one on that thing. So we're going to load the next scene. Oh, sorry. Scene manager actually saying dot build index. Plus one. So we just want to get the current index plus one, and we're going to load the next scene. When we're reloading the game, we're just going to go scene manager dot load scene. And we're going to load scene zero because okay, our first scene should always be scene zero. Now, where this works in the index is if I jump here into Unity and I go File, Build Settings. Okay, this shows me the scenes and the build. So currently there's none. I can click Add Open Scene, and now scenes golf one. Its index is zero. Okay. So that's that all working. Um, yeah, that's fine. So then the next thing I'm going to do is. Yeah, let's test that and see. So now when we hit the flagpole. We're going to access our game manager. We're going to ask this level manager script and we're going to load next scene. OK, this is. There's nothing going to happen here. Or you know what we can do? We can get this to uh, if it's end of game, we can just reload the level. OK, so now if we press play. Cool. So we can see now we've got our game all basically working. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to re-enable the start screen. I'm going to turn off physics on the ball. I'm going to turn off side to use gravity. On the flag point, I'm going to do that. On the game manager here, I'm just going to, yeah, I'm going to remove this here because this probably, this scene shouldn't be my last scene. So, and then I'm going to go file save. I'm going to go file. Actually, one thing I'm going to do before I do that, I'm going to create a folder here. Oh. And I'm going to call this uh, prefabs. I'm going to make the flag, flagpole prefab. I'm going to make the game manager prefab. Drag the flagpole into the wrong folder, and I got to make the ball a prefab. Okay, and what this means, I can build out new levels and use these as prefabs and kind of access their behaviors and stuff. So then I'm going to go file, uh, save as scenes, and I'm going to call this golf too. And I am going to go file build settings, make sure I add open scenes. So now I've got two scenes here. My game manager end of game is going to make. What I'm going to do is make it so that this screen becomes visible. So this is going to be our end screen in a second. And our button on this is I can remove that one and I can attach the great game manager here, level manager, and we're going to reload game. Okay. So this text, I'm going to say play again. And maybe going to make it a little bit smaller so that it fits there. I'm also going to just move this up to there. And let's say congratulations. You. Um, I'm going to hit this button here, wrap text. Oh, wrapping is enabled. I'm just going to make this a bit wider.
Maybe something like this. I mean, maybe center it. See, I don't like where that button is now. So I'm going to move that thing to here. Cool. And I'm just going to make sure this is in screen. I'm just going to set this text here. Sometimes with text fields, I find it's useful to name them as whatever the text is, just so that it's kind of easy to find them and you know what they are. Um, cool. So let's just make sure everything's hooked up. This button, when we click it, it's going to reload the game. So we're going to start off with the end screen hidden. Oh, our flagpole. We want to change the number on this to two. Our game manager is here. It's going to pull up the end screen and set it active. All looks fine. Move the ball there. We just in this level we're gonna start using gravity active um, because gravity is gonna we want gravity to affect the ball basically in this scene. So I'm gonna save that. And before we take a break, I'm gonna open up golf one and I'm gonna see if we can play through from start to finish before we get the ball and the tags up and down. Cool. We've got our ball falling to the ground. Let's see, this should knock off the, as soon as it knocks off the pole, we should load into it. So I've got something wrong or not working on the flagpole. Let's double check that, I think that should be working. physics on this. Okay, so I'm just going to test that flagpole just to make sure that is working. It was working a minute ago. So I don't quite get why it would have stopped working, but we'll just check. Uh, again, we'll set the ground active to false. Let's press play. What's happening there is the canvas is kind of in the way of the ball. Okay, so that's definitely an issue with our scene manager. Yeah, because that one's this one's working. So it's not loading the next scene. So I've seen magic get after seeing Bill Lennox. I'm just going to put a print in here to debug this. Um, if this appears in the console, I know the issue is the code here. Otherwise, it's the code here. But I'm assuming it's not the code here because we're not going into the else statement either. But let's just check. Okay, so we're not, that's not printing out the code. So, so 
to figure out the level manager, it does not seem. Yeah. So let's kind of check and see, just make sure this is being called. Move that out of here. If this doesn't work, we're gonna take a break and I'll just see if I can fix this before coming back for the second part of this. So Unity F when I'm doing mm -hmm. is trying to, okay, cool. So that is working. So for some reason, when I'm scene manager, get active scene, dot build that build index. So this is zero plus one is less than scene manager account. So one thing we can, one thing I'm just going to try scene manager account on this one. Got two scenes in there, but we'll see. This shouldn't be. This shouldn't give any different result. I'm not expecting it to work. I'm just curious. Okay, cool. I'm gonna. Stories is okay. Cool. So we're in the second screen now. I'm gonna say so gonna play that. Okay. Cool. So it turns out I didn't need the plus one there. That actually wasn't helping me. So otherwise, that's all working. Okay. So it's the build index is less than the scene count. Yeah, that makes sense, doesn't it? Like the current scene is less than that. Yeah, so I was adding a one, so it wasn't getting. You know, I, was, I was doing something silly. Apologies about that, but that should all basically work now. So I'm going to save that. Then we go back to Unity, save on scene, and then we're going to come back and we're going to set up the controls and the movement for the ball. Okay, so we'll take a little break there and uh, we'll come back for that. Uh, we can't hear you, your uh, audio is off, sorry. <laughs> 